I would like to thank you all for joining us today for A Visionary New Build, the Department of African American and African Studies with Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown and Dr. Tamora Lomax. In this episode of Conversations with Cal, Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown and Dr. Tamora Lomax will reveal their experiences joining MSU during a global pandemic and discuss the visionary new build, new build of the Department of African American and African Studies. My name is Solandra Bowman and I will be moderating today's discussion. I'm a doctoral student in educational foundations and inquiry at the University of South Carolina, but I am no stranger to AAAS at MSU. I started my doctoral journey in African American and African studies at MSU, but I needed to return home. I still though carry my AAAS experience, my commitment to black studies, Black girls and education with me. I am beyond grateful to Dr. B for her push, her enlightened witness, and for joining and celebrating Black Girl Genius in South Carolina. This is indeed a full circle opportunity for me, and I am delighted for the opportunity to moderate this conversation between two of the visionaries lifting the Department of African American and African Studies at MSU. Thank you both for your time. And, these, and for having me. Before we get started, I have a few informational items that we need to share. For those of you who are new to Zoom, I would like to direct you to the question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. You may use the Q&A button to submit any questions that you have at any point during the webinar. We will make sure that we're keeping track. We'll make sure that we're keeping track of these questions and be sure to address them to our speakers as appropriate. I would like to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Cal YouTube channel within the next few days for those who could not make it today or if you'd like to watch it back at your leisure. The only faces that will be shown today on the recorded version are those of the presenters. So you don't have to worry about your camera or your microphone. Now, I would like to introduce our presenters. Dr. Tamara Lomax is the Foundational Associate Professor of African American and African Studies at Michigan State University. She received her PhD in 2011 from Vanderbilt University in Religion, where she specialized in Black Religious History and Black Diaspora Studies. She also developed expertise in women, gender and sexuality studies and black British and US black cultural studies. In 2018, Dr. Lomax published Jezebel Unhinged, Loosing the Black Female Body in Religion and Culture with Duke University Press. In addition, she organized and guest edited Black Bodies in Ecstasy, Black Women, the Black Church, and the politics of pleasure. It's a special issue published with Black Theology and International Journal. In 2014, she published Womanist and Black Feminist Responses to Tyler Perry's, Tyler Perry's Cultural Productions with Palgrave Macmillan. That is in co-authored edited volume with Ron Manigault Bryan and Carol B. Duncan. She is currently working on a new book, Parenting Against the Patriarchy, Raising Non- <laughs> sons in white supremacist America with Duke University Press. However, Dr. Lomax isn't solely a writer and researcher. She's a scholar activist. In 2017, she co-organized Our History, Our Future, a multi-generational human rights conference at Boston University. And in 2011, Dr. Lomax co-founded The Feminist Wire, an online publication committed to feminist, anti-racist, and anti-imperialist socio-political critique. Welcome, Dr. Lomax. Thank you. So have Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown. Dr. Brown is at her best when disciplinary norms are disrupted in favor of creating ideas that swing. Brown's research documents and analyzes Black girls' lived experiences and the practical ways they make girlhood, Black girlhood with those who love them. Her previous work has explored how Black girls conceptualize freedom, creativity, and relationships in Saving Our Lives, Hear Our Truths, affectionately known as So Hot. So Hot has received external support from the Nobel Foundation and the Whiting Foundation. Brown has authored two books, Hear Our Truths, The Creative Potential of Black Girlhood, 
and Black Girlhood Celebration Toward a Hip Hop Feminist Pedagogy. She's also authored numerous essays and journal articles and co-edited several anthologies. Before coming to MSU, Dr. Brown was an Associate Professor of Education Policy and Gender and Women's Studies at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown is the inaugural chairperson at MSU and MSU Foundation Professor of the Department of African American <laughs> Studies at Michigan State University. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown, for joining us today as well. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten the formalities taken care of. Now, <laughs> dig into this conversation. Please, um, let's start, um, or please start by telling us a little more about yourself beyond the bio, what you want us to know, what brought you to MSU, and what you bring to AAAS at MSU. Well, I will start out. Um, so I'm a Black feminist scholar of religion and uh, culture studies who places emphasis on history, theories, and methods in the study of Black religion um, and Black popular culture. So I, um, a thing that's important about me is that I left the academy in 2015 with no plans on, of returning. And um, it's important to say that because it took an opportunity like this one at MSU to even bring me back. Uh, so it's emphasis on building collectivity and black feminisms, genders and sexualities um, for me was like a divine occurrence. You know, like if this, this position had my name on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very comfortable at home being a writer, being a public scholar or a scholar with a very public facing agenda. It was very busy. Um, but this position had my name on it. And so I had to be here. So for me, it was the position, it was this emphasis, it was uh, the people involved. It was the possibility of visioning with Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown and, and, and also April, uh, Dr. April Baker Bell and then Christy Dotson. That was a dream for me. And so I had to be here. Um, the other thing is that the timing was right. I have two kids in college who were basically born when I was um, starting out my journey to be a scholar. And so they were born within that context. And so I kind of, I felt like when I finished my PhD that I owed it to them to be present again, but now they're in college. So it's like the position was right, the people were right and the timing was right. I will say lastly, uh, what I bring with me is uh, again, when I left the academy in 2015, um, I had left the institution, but I did not leave the labor. And so I had not only built the Feminist Wire, which has published almost 3,000 uh, intersectional race-centered feminist essays, uh, which holds a wealth of knowledge, but also a, fem a feminist and social justice academic publishing arm. So a lot of people don't know that it has that. So I bring all of that with me. I bring that platform. I bring that audience. I bring uh, the social capital that I built over time. Um, so within that of uh, within that realm of the Feminist Wire, I created platforms for other people to write, right? And other people to publish. But I've also negotiated publishing for folks like Alicia Garza of, the, of Black, Black Lives Matters and Bell Hooks, uh, the beloved Black feminist. So I bring um, all of my social capital and those platforms with me. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this conversations with Cal. Thank you, Solana, mm -hmm. for the introduction. So good to see you, Dr. Lomax. So I am Ruth Nicole Brown. I was born in Chicago Heights, Illinois, which is the South suburbs of Chicago to uh, my parents, Lawrence and Evelyn Brown. I am a first generation college student and now first generation mm -hmm. administrator. I am beyond the academic bio, a mom of four and life partner and wife to get to. My research focuses, uh, as you mentioned in the introduction on creating knowledge and making art with black girls. And in 2006, I was a postdoc. And I said, if I'm going to stay in the academy, I am going to do the work that absolutely matters to me full stop. Mm -hmm. In 2006, mm -hmm. I created Saving Our Lives, Hear Our Truths, 
um, because I, I knew some things and I wanted uh, better for black girls than I had researched in my dissertation and could point to. I wanted to create a space of black girlhood celebration as we sat then in all of our complexity, which meant for me as a scholar that black girls and black girlhood would be in no under no under no servitude to any disciplinary conceptualization, but that we would make what we wanted and I would create the space along with some really amazing, fabulous uh, women and homegirls and non-binary genius for what they knew and what they wanted to take center stage. Um, through that work with Soul Hot, we have since uh, played a major role in developing Black girlhood studies. And I know that what I bring with me is that I am absolutely in the Black feminist tradition. I have a love and an artistic vision. So I enjoy creating something from out of nothing. I uh, love hip hop. It's also that aesthetic. And also <laughs> extremely called um, by this position that saw Black feminisms, Black genders, and Black sexualities uh, central to the work of Black studies. I was absolutely compelled to answer that call. Thank you so much for sharing with us and for, um, you know, it, I, I, I would say it is divine too that two persons answered the call in such, um, in such a way. So can you share with us a little bit more about the vision for the Department of African American and African Studies? What's, what's coming? Or what's he, what has manifested and what's coming? <laughs> I'll, I'll take the start of that. So uh, again, first of all, I want to say thanks to the folks who uh, put in the labor with the AAAS program and also the incredible transition team, as Dr. Lomax uh, mentioned already. And they have set the stage for us to come in and make some incredible changes to build the new infrastructure around the AAAS department. And um, as Dr. Lomax and I have both talked about the significance and the importance of being a part of something that is bigger than any one person that we know the work that we are creating right now this year will resound for generations. And we are so excited about that. Um, we want to create a space of radical belonging and collectivity. And so one of the first things that we decided and, and put our hearts, minds, and hands to was creating a collective vision for the department. And I love it. And so I'm going to uh, read it to you. The vision for AAAS is this. We insist that Black Studies uncovers and creates technologies of living for Black people and Black futures. And when we say Black people, we mean all Black people. And when we say Black futures, that is to say beyond survival and into wellness. That was uh, work we created at the top of the year. And that was myself, Dr. Lomax, Dr. Christy Dotson, and Dr. April Baker Bell, a dream team for sure. <laughs> Um, I would add to that, it is a dream team. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing to work with um, Black women who all, we all come to the table differently, but very much similar in that we are Black women and that we want to center uh, Black feminism, but that we also want to center wellness. And we also, we also want to vision something um, that maybe hasn't been done or it has been done, but maybe it's the thing that we wanted. Maybe it's the kind of department that we had longed for. Um, Dr. April Baker Bell actually says that in the recent article that came out about our, our vision. And um, she talks about it being the department that she wished that she had when she was a student at MSU and, and also the department that she wishes that um, her, her daughter and her son um, would have, or that she's excited that they will have. And so the fact that we um, un are unapologetically Black feminists, that matters, that's important, but also that we unapologetically center all Black lives. And we say that, you know, in the first statement, when you first sign on to the, to the website, we're very clear about that, that we are a Black studies department that centers every single 
um, Black life. And that's very Black feminist of us. <laughs> Absolutely. So for those who may um, need a reference, um, and also just to kind of get a better feel for who you are, if you had to take the vision of MSU and put it over beats and rhymes and add <laughs> and a harmony, what song would best illustrate that vision? Uh, it doesn't matter who, who goes first for this one. Um, so this is this is very a very interesting question, and I love it because we just put out our sonic interviews, mm -hmm. and I almost feel like that's a historic thing that we have done. Um, it's going uh, viral on social media on Facebook. Um, it's a pretty big deal. We just posted them yesterday, and I really have to give credit to Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown because this was her vision. And I remember when she introduced this, she said, "You know, uh, we got to put folk up." I try to put folk up on game uh, in terms of music. And so I love the question because I didn't understand the significance of introducing ourselves to music mm. until I actually listened to all uh, of our, I don't know what you, if you call them podcasts. I don't know what you call them, but I listened to all of our sonic interviews. And I'm just amazed at how much more I learned about Mm -hmm. my colleagues right so for me it differs it depends on the day right and so um one of my main songs that I actually have in my list well actually both of these songs are on my list one of them is isn't she lovely that yeah. for me that that goes for me but that also goes for the project you know like isn't isn't this lovely you know by Stevie Wonder that's that is kind of my theme music right now is guiding me through the writing process of my new book um isn't she lovely aren't they lovely just it is a whole to me it is the audacity to talk about blackness as being lovely within a society that is constantly saying we're anything but and which is what stevie wonder was doing as he was singing the song to his daughter that isn't she lovely you know in the 70s with all of these stereotypes surrounding blackness and black girlhood so that song and then the second one you know, I got a gangster side to me. And so it's Nuck If You Buck, you know, that is my crime my prime mob. That is one of my favorite songs because <laughs> of course it's about frankness, but it is also about disrespectability. It is about, again, the audacity. It's about courageousness. It's about um, moving outside of the box, but it's also like, you know, we can throw these hands if we have to, you know? And so as a black feminist, there is this kind of throwing of hands theoretically or rhetorically, or even, you know, in terms of our research, it is a fight that we are um, in the midst of um, in, in, our, in our work and our labors to really center black beauty and black lives. <laughs> I love that, Dr. Lomax. I love our sonic introductions. <laughs> they are amazing. I mean, you they can are. feel what the department mm -hmm. is, is like. You're listening to us um, all together. And so one of the, I'm going to choose a song too, share a song with you that is also um, featured on my sonic introduction, a small part of it. But um, part of my research is part of my good health um, has been listening to the catalog of Rochelle Farrell. I love Rochelle Farrell. I love her music. I love her ideas. Uh, she is also um, a scholar, a methodologist, um, speaks to quantum physics and so much more. And so there's a particular version of the song called Love is All Around that is on YouTube. Um, I found this version and thanks to the person who attended the concert that I couldn't be at um, and <laughs> uploaded uh, this video of Love is All Around. And I love it um, because it speaks uh, to the moment. It's a good mm. reminder for me. It centers me. It grounds me um, in the work that I'm here to do. And I love it because Rochelle Farrell is in it, but also because this version is um, with uh, Lila Hathaway. Uh, Lettucey is also singing on this version and Rasan Patterson is also um, singing on this version. And so again, for me, I love a collective sound. If you know their music, all of them, each of them individually are virtuosos. Um, they, they are the masters of what they do. 
And then to see them in conversation through music with Love is All Around, you see them play, you see them have fun with it, you see them uh, talk to each other, you, you see them create new sounds. Um, and, and entire galaxies in the note. And you know, that's what we do mm -hmm. to be that so, so high. And that um, is what I am so excited about in working with uh, Dr. Lomax and building this AAAS department. That is awesome. I, I certainly think that um, it encapsulates the new department. Music is a representation of what we build together. Um, and also, you know, the songs that you have selected are certainly examples of radical resistance that celebrate um, Black folk. And so um, I think that's great. The viewers want to know where we can find those sonic interviews. So can you share with us where they are posted? You go to AAAS.com and you scroll mid-page. So under um, the Black Lives Matter statement, and then under underneath that are um, our favorite quotes from our favorite Black feminists, where you could just read those and get your life, especially if you need some sort of encouragement for the day. I have gone back to those many a days. Um, but right underneath it, you'll see our pictures, and then you could press play. There's a, there's a statement, and then you could press play and get those. I think it's like in black and white or something, but it is so dope. The music is amazing. Um, some of us were on Facebook listening last night and we were talking about how um, our April Baker Bell, Dr. Baker Bell said that uh, she was in the kitchen doing something and Nucky B. Buck came on and she just lost it. And same for me, I was listening to hers and uh, Bossy by Khalees came on and it, and, it, and it just put me in a mood. So I hope that um, folks will go to those and really listen. And then we all talked about how we were listening again this morning. So I used it to get to my workout. So like, check it out. <clears throat> it's really, really amazing. And definitely kudos to Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown because this was, this was her vision. It's beautiful. Awesome. Bees likes to use the term delightfully bowed it. It seems like to me to everybody in this, um, <laughs> initial group of um, visionary scholars is delightfully about it. And, and I love it. <laughs> and, and students need um, examples of an audacious and enlightened witness. And so mm -hmm. it's really great to see. And the comments so far are also affirming that. Um, based on the comments that are coming in, there are certainly lots of questions, um, but we, I assume that um, after this conversation, our viewers will be recommending the department um, to prospective and current students. So with that said, I was wondering if you all can speak a little bit to the kinds of students for which AAAS might be a good fit and the kind of environment that you are working to create. I'll jump in. Um, so AAAS is for everybody. You know, I'm thinking about uh, Bell Hooks' book, Feminism is for Everybody. AAAS is for everybody. It is for those interested in a more just and more beautiful um, Black and collective futures. If you are interested in that, then AAAS is for you. Um, AAAS is also both academic and pragmatic. So that's very important to note. So it is definitely for those who are interested in social justice. Um, it's, it's for those looking to make um, the legal system more just. Right now I'm teaching and I have a ton of students who are pre-law students. Some just got into law school. And so I have a lot of students who are social justice activists who are very interested in making the legal system more just. So it's for those students looking to go to law school. It's for those students who are interested in the medical industry who wants to um, make the medical industry less racist. They want to rid of rid it of anti blackness. It's for those who are interested in the arts and who want in the arts and who want to make music, like Dr. Ruth Nicole. I do want to note that on Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown's sonic interviews, I do believe there is original music that she is either <laughs> rapping or creating. Uh, so I just want to put that plug in that folks go there and listen. But if you want to be an artist, you know, it's for those people. Um, if you're one of, if you're committed to entrepreneurship, it's for those people. We have classes for literally all of that. <clears throat> yeah, well, thank you very much. That is. I would, I would say one last thing. One last thing. 
Go ahead. No, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say one. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's uh, I just thought about my students. And one of the things that so many students said on the first day of class in terms of why they had chosen AAAS as a minor, they were there before we got there. And what they said is that they were searching for community. And mm -hmm. so it's for that. It is also for those searching for answers, but those searching for community, a space to be loud and audacious. <laughs> yep, you hit it. I'm so glad you said that. Um, AAAS is for big thinkers. It is for those with audacious, radical imaginations. Uh, it's a place for those who are intellectually curious. Um, I, I believe it will be a place for students who are attracted to what's really real um, and what's really going on. Yeah. It's a community-centered space uh, for those who love Black people and uh, are into Black studies, who know that um, their definition of success necessarily includes the people who love them, their communities, their families who want to make a difference and have an impact. Uh, AAAS uh, is for, for sure, the artists, uh, the activists. Um, mm -hmm. It's for students who don't want to ever be worried about being concerned about being pushed out, um, particularly of study for, you know, whatever reason they won't have that worry so they can get to these good ideas and I think it's for those who remember their greatest and best teachers and still want to make them proud um, mm -hmm. I believe that AAAS um, will be uh, a vanguard department uh, for those on the vanguard and, and for me being on the vanguard necessarily includes uh, taking some risk in yes. service to greater justice for black folks and black thought Audacious students seeking opportunities for creativity and rigorous engagement, social critique. Um, sounds like me, early MSU as well. So I share um, Dr. Bell's sentiments that it's certainly um, shaping up to be the kind of department that those of us who have experience with MSU have dreamed about. And those who are perspective, um, I guess their, their dreams can be realized. And so it is just, it's, it's incredible to um, witness um, this side of the development of the program. So can you talk to us a little bit about how these, um, how these things translate to the curriculum? What, what does the program of study for um, AAAS look like? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, of course, um, just to reiterate, we said that, that um, our Black Studies Department embraces without apology Black feminisms, Black genders, and Black sexuality studies. And at the graduate level, we are missioned um, and our work surrounds three organizing inquiries, and that includes Black cultures and institutions, Black girlhood studies and Black speculative ecologies. Um, at the undergrad level, we have organized courses around uh, three thematics, including communities in action, creative expression, culture and performance, as well as Black institutions. All of us do public facing work, and I should also add, are just committed to making concrete connections between our scholarship mm -hmm our pedagogy, both public and in uh, the formal classroom and as well as social justice. Awesome. So it seems to me that there will be lots of opportunities for um, students to be engaged beyond the classroom and work that um, in, in work that is social justice oriented, but also lends well to scholarship. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what you anticipate for beyond the classroom engagement or what that experiential learning model looks like for, um, or what it might look like for AAAS? Um, I can say a bit, and I know that um, Dr. Ruth Coburn probably wants to speak about the postdoc, mm -hmm. um, the cultural, the post, the cultural worker, but I, I wanted to say, you know, one of the main things for students now, even today, and this has been an issue for decades, is really um, getting first, getting students to see the value of the Black Studies degree. I mean, that the question remains, a question that we don't ask of medicine or law or the arts, well, we do probably ask it of the arts, is what can we do with this, right? So I, for me, I guess the primary uh, work right now is really 
um, getting the word out to those who are skeptical and um, who are skeptical still about Black studies, right? So getting um, people to see that there are so many amazing things, liberating things, like e basically everything you want to do, but you can do it better <laughs> with a Black studies degree, right? So that's, for me, that's the first thing. The other thing is the the postdoc, the cultural worker. Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown and I are both um, extremely invested in um, not only the arts, but cultural work and what that means and having these public facing agendas. Um, and so that's that's another route. Um, another is through our presencing. I mean, we are doing a variety of things through MSU, but we also both have very um, public platforms. So we're doing a lot of presence, presence, presencing, presencing in that way. Um, then the, there's the curriculum. And so uh, the curriculum is kind of inherently like also very public facing as well. So there's that. Um, and then I think that there's programming. We will begin, you know, talking more. Obviously, we can't do very much with programming right now because of the pandemic, but uh, programming, I think, will definitely really give us the opportunity to engage students um, beyond the classroom uh, in ways that, you know, really go beyond the podcast. They go beyond, we've done that, um, that go beyond conferencing. I mean, I'm excited to see all the ways that we put our, our heads together and imagine. <clears throat> But I think the opportunities are wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly, yeah. especially if you're working to um, create spaces of wellness over just retaining students for um, enrollment sake. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Dr. Bees, I think I may have um, interrupted you. Oh, uh, I've taken a breath. I, I just have a little bit more to add to that. And I know we're going to get to the dreams. So um, I'm fundamentally interested in Black study, and I know that can happen in any place. I'm excited to meet the intellectuals that exist in the community who have attended the School of Lived Experience. Uh, I'm attending, I'm interested and excited to meet um, scholars across the university who are interested in what our department is doing and want to think uh, and create with us. And also just um, finding those spaces where we can begin to chip away at some of the boundaries between um, what we think of as um, in there, out there, community, campus, um, or do enough good work where those uh, boundaries and obstacles are revealed so we can then get about um be delightfully about it in terms of creating spaces for us um to meet and to think and to work uh together so i just want to say that and i know for me i've long you know been a little frustrated with uh formal classrooms and so i'm interested in all the things we can make and create um outside of this this condition certainly allows it though um you know there are ways that we can connect even while being required uh to social distance but i am looking forward to like actually physically being in community with communities of folks um, and i know the students will be just as eager to do that as we are that is perfect because we just received a question that asked, how does Will Community Service Outreach in the Black community engage AAAS students? Um, and so I, I think that you have cleared that up for us that AAAS will continue to have a presence in um, the Black community across the state of Michigan and beyond. Um, and so um, thank you so much, Ms. Mackey, for that question. Um, I, think, I think we've got that one answered um i think moving well i wanted to add to that though i okay. wanted to add to that oh sure yeah i wanted to add to that because i think that we um i know that ruth nicole and i bring with us these works that are outside of the classroom and for a while we both were outside of the institution and so social justice is so important to this work and so we both have an interest in maintaining the connections to the local Lansing community, but then also the greater body, um, specifically Detroit. I'm thinking about Dr. Baker Bell's work in the public school, a public school system in Detroit. Um, but also, you know, something I've been thinking about given my work 
in Black religion is I'm very much interested in um, the Black church population, um, and which is which is very interesting work because typically Black studies, this is something I've argued for a while, mm -hmm. is that Black studies um, has long um, not paid the attention that it needs to pay to Black religiosity and specifically the Black church, but other forms of religion as well. But if most, um, most Black Americans happen to be uh, Black Christians, then I would think that Black, those Black experiences matter. And so I have a particular interest in really making a connection um, there. So that's another way in terms of the Black churches in the area in Lansing and then also Detroit. Um, so I have my eye on that. Um, but then I'm also thinking about um, Patrice, Patrice Cooler's risk here. Um, a couple, maybe a week or so ago, and I was one of the uh, conversation partners with her, and she talked about the local Black Lives Matters uh, 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 organization that's in Lansing that I did not know about. So I'm definitely very interested once, you know, we can all go play outside again um, and making connections between the department, but then also um, that organization. But again, like Dr. Ruth Nicole said, like we want to know, we want to be in communi community with, in a conversation with, we want to learn from um, the stakeholders in the community. We want to know what us being here means to them. What do they need from us? I'm very much interested in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for opening those lines of communication even more. Um, I would venture as far as to say that um, those who are interested can find the AAAS contact information on the website provided to you in the comments. So if representing an organization or a body that would like to engage with AAAS, please reach out to um, the department. Okay. Um, okay, so we have another question about dreams. Can you speak to the dreams that you have for the new department? How do the how might those dreams include the relationships that we are talking about? Um, I think we probably start with Dr. Brown on that and then let Dr. Lomax expand upon her um, previous comments. All right, sure. So when we first uh, met, and I like to remind people like this is, I, of course, I knew of the work of Dr. Lomax um, before, but this is the first year that we've been in conversation um, like this, not just like this, but in, in colleagues with such a high state new build that is AAAS. And so we've known each other for less than a year. Uh, and the same with uh, Dr. Dotson and Dr. Baker Bell. And in this time of required social distancing, we had to figure out how we still were going to connect. And one of the easiest ways for us to connect and get this new bill done is through collectively dreaming together. We are a bunch of dreamers with like our imaginations go way, way beyond. And it is so exciting, feels so invigorating when we're in conversation about, no, what it is that you want? What do you really want? What do we want um, for Black studies, uh, for Black folks? And so uh, that's what we do. And we uh, have enough trust built amongst each other to dream collectively. And that's extremely special and not to be taken for granted at all. And so you ask us about dreams. We got a super long list. Uh, so part <laughs> of the dreams that I have necessarily uh, includes the arts wanting to create a, a creative space, um, creating collaborative artistic relationships with students uh, among fac faculty members, community members. Uh, Dr. Lomax spoke of what we're um, envisioning as a uh, program, a kind of initiative where you might begin uh, the work here as a postdoc, as an artist in residence, as a cultural worker, and then are developed in your work um, and mutually give and find what we've created compelling to you so much so that you would like to stay here and be a part of um, our community as a uh, faculty. Uh, we are aiming to do presencing. So we've started with the curriculum revisions and we also hope to create uh, co-curricular initiatives that support students in their whole person um, so they can uh, do their work. I mean, so many times I know um, Black students, uh, the institutional is hostile, so much so they can't get to the study. And I have a former student, Dr. Portia Gardner, 
uh, who worked with me. And one of the things that she has always appreciated about Soul Hot, what I will bring here, is that we create the conditions for students to hold visionary thoughts. And often that means that, you know, the basic requirements of, are met so they can do the deep work that is required of them to dream anew, um, to share those dreams, to trust each other with them out loud, to collectively make it. Um, and so we are surviving, but that is very much the into wellness part that we are dreaming about. Of course, um, I have dreams about making Soul Hot here, expanding that work with Black girls in this community, and also really excited about, obviously, the work of the Feminist Wire, which is internationally renowned, um, which holds the stories of our people in ways that are completely accessible, and one reading one essay will absolutely transform you on the cellular level. I have many favorite essays from the Feminist Wire. And so, I mean, one of, you know, my dreams is just to continue to support that work, um, all of our public facing work, Dr. Doxon's uh, political advocacy. And I can't wait to uh, team up with Dr. Baker uh, Bell because we both work in school systems and know the significance of um, education for liberation for, for black youth. Dr. Lomax. Dream with me, please, Dr. Lomax. Bye. She may be a bit she's still there. Okay, because our, our dream Lomax. is deep. Well, I think just the audacity of dreaming and, and articulating your dreams in this space is, is revolutionary. A lot of times we don't like to talk about that. We'd rather have something set in stone before we announce or, you know, um, but certainly in, in the Black studies tradition of becoming, yes. um, would certainly be speaking those dreams into existence. And so we appreciate you sharing those dreams. And hopefully there are folks in the audience who are interested in joining in the work and seeing those dreams manifest. And part of the work, I mean, as you've heard in our conversation is dreaming collectively, dreaming together. Um, President Stanley talks about together we will. And we know that that work is no small work. It has to be actively supported. When we think of blackness, we know that to be uh, a multiplicity of more than one thing. I mean, when you asked before, I'm thinking about the kind of question or the kind of students we hope to attract. Students who are gifted in more than one thing. We know we can be um, more than one thing, we might need more. And so uh, part of the dream is the collective dream. Um, as Dr. Uh, Fred Moten says, the consent not to be a single being. And that is radical work. That is revolutionary because in this culture that we're in, in this moment still, uh, people prefer to highlight and spotlight the individual. And we are resisting that in favor of all black people, in favor of collectivity, in favor of uh, black feminism is for everybody, as Bell Hook says. And that takes some radical imagination on the on the side of the folks who are looking at us and wanting to support us uh, because we're asking that you support uh, the collective. And I know that to be, uh, you know, I mean, the most tremendous ROI you could ever receive, right? Uh, because again, this that change resounds for generations. Absolutely. Dr. Lomax is back. Yeah, <laughs> Lomax, will you dream with us? Yes. Hi, oh, man. You know, that's, um, that's one of the most exciting things about working with Dr. Brown is that we're both dreamers. And so um, I know for me, my um, inspiration for dreams, they are kind of divine happenings for me. And so they happen at certain certain times where I have this aha and it's like, oh my gosh, we got to do this. Everything that I've done. Um, one of the things that I have been thinking about is really um, way, ways in which that Dr. Brown and I can merge the works that we've done between So Hot and the Feminist Wire. What might that look like, right? We have our own organizations, but what what might the merging of that work look like? What 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 does it mean to um, have a so hot, you know, MSU version? You know, I I have a very deep interest 
and working with um, Black women and girls, particularly young Black girls, teenagers, um, and, and then the young, you know, the, the preteens. And so what might that look like if we created some sort of so hot, you know, here, um, you know, in the local environment or some sort of organization um, like that, some sort, some sort of work? Because I, I really, you know, obviously we can conference, right? But I want to, that's fine. I want to do something beyond that that's really life changing and something that's more steady, you know, something that goes beyond the weekend. And I don't know what that looks like. Um, but part of my dreaming is that um, something with um, the young, the young um, in the community. <clears throat> that um, got me excited because mm -hmm. I am so, so hot will certainly um, produce girls who are ready and waiting on their moment to share <laughs> their thoughts with the world. So, so hot on Feminist Wire, my God, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is exciting to me. Um, we have a few more questions in the chat and then one more planned or two more planned questions that we need to get through. So um, can you tell us a little bit about alumni engagement? Um, there are those who are very familiar and have history with AAAS at MSU. Um, they're excited about the new department and want to know how they can be involved and what alumni engagement might look like. Can you share your plans? Sure, I'll start. Um, first, I look forward to connecting with and celebrating the alumni of the program. Um, please keep in touch with what we're doing. I can also already envision the first cohort of students at the undergrad and graduate level who uh, graduate from the department and the epic party that we mm -hmm. must throw on their behalf. Um, <laughs> First and foremost with this, we are building and when we say that, we mean that sincerely. So we have to develop a communications plan that include all the things that you already probably expect, uh, social media accounts, a newsletter, snail mail, I'm still a fan of receiving something in mail uh, where you are up to date with what is going on here. And we're working with marketing and communications in Cal to hire for a position that will help us uh, get that up and going. Um, another dream that I have related to alumni connections, um, I believe that AAAS alumni are lifelong learners. So I look forward to creating events and initiatives where we can bond and build relationships through our continued love. Um, of Black studies, of Black ideas, of, of sharing information and knowledge. <clears throat> Dr. Brown, Dr. Lomax, would you like to add anything? All right. Um, no, I think that's, that's, you know, pretty much it. I mean, I think that um, thinking about all the ways that we could be in touch is very um, important to us, you know, beyond obviously students that are in, that are still in school, but then, you know, as folks go on, I think that's very important in terms of, that's an important measurement in terms of seeing how the department did, you know, and how we're doing and then all what, what we need. And so um, we are building a couple of avenues for that. I mean, the website, um, is kind of a mechanism for that. Um, it's a multi, the website is a, um, a multi-tiered, uh, dynamic digital strategy and very intentionally. So, um, so what you see even right now is like phase one. And so even that is dynamic, but that's just phase one. There are other things that we'd like to do. The sonic introductions was another but so that's to get folks to come and not just to come. Typically, you go to websites like to see, OK, what classes are being offered and what time is the event, right? So we don't want we want something that's much more dynamic. But that also that's that's also our way of saying that we want folks to keep returning back and to be in conversation with us. Um, and so be in conversation with us through music. Yes, come to the events, but also we're thinking about ways to keep the conversation going. Um, and so mm -hmm. we're very much uh, interested in, in how to be in touch. What's the best way of being in touch for students these days? Is it social media? Is it checking the site? Is it sending you, you know, emails? Is it, well, we're, you know, we're looking to 
really try all of that to make sure that um, we are in touch with our current students, our past students, and the students that are to come that will soon you know, graduate. So there are most, thank goodness, there are multiple modalities um, in order to be in touch. Um, and we're thinking through all of those and we'll probably have our finger on the pulse of, of, of them all. I will say though, um, in terms of social media uh, accounts so that people can talk back to us. Like it's so, you know, important to use those mediums. I look forward to, you know, maybe having a, you know, this probably down the road, but doing a, club, a clubhouse um, conversation, a panel where we could talk back. I mean, we talk about access. That's the media access where you're engaging, not even through a print, but through voice to voice, you're engaging with a large audience. I would love to do something, you know, like that. So it's really, the, it's wide open in terms of what's possible is ultimately what I'm getting at. More dreams, less boundaries. I can get with that. <laughs> and, and you also provided a really great segue into the next question. So I am hearing that right now the AAAS website is the informational hub. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what visitors can find when they visit the new site? Absolutely. Um, I kind of want to pull it up just for a second. So if you go to the site, <clears throat> the first thing that you're going to find is uh, there's, there's a bar at the top and you have our about academics, people, opening, news, and support. So if you hit the drop down for about, you get our mission, vision, and values, our history, and then who we are. To me, if you want to work in the department, if you want to major, minor, do a master's, a PhD, like that should be your starting point because it is really our hearts on the table. This is who we are. This is what we're about. This is from where we've come. This is where we want to go. This is how we're dreaming. That is there under that about. Um, next is the academics. And if you hit that link, then you get our bios, but also how to reach us. So if you want to uh, email, it's right there. But also if you want to follow us, if you want to see the, what we're about and the kind of works we've done, they're all listed right there. I'm sorry, that's under people. That's if you hit people. Under academics, that's actually where we will have um, our new information about our curriculum. So that's not, the new information is not there yet. That's under academics. Um, under openings, that's if you want to come work with us, because it is the place to be. Uh, and then news is all the stuff that we have going on and all the ways that MSU has really tried to promote the work that we are um, doing. And then support is a very important tab because it is how you can support AAAS and we do need that support. So I um, really encourage folks to go through the entire site and then end at that support button. Uh, you can support students, support faculty, or support innovation. All of that um, is there. But I want to go back to uh, the first page. So under that, the first message you receive on the front page is that Black Lives Matter. So that's important um, that we have that AAAS unequivocally and unapologetically maintains that Black Lives Matter. No if, if, ands, or buts about that. So you have that. And then underneath is probably one of my favorite parts. And that is, again, where you get your life and your inspiration for the day, your inspirational vitamin for the day. And that's where we have a range of our favorite Black feminists and quotes that get us through. We share those. Underneath that are the sonic introductions where um, you, know, you could listen to who we are, to us express ourselves through music. And then under that, you have our publication. So it's, it's like a, a, a bookstore or a, a bookshelf of all of our uh, varying works that we have. And then under that, there, is a, there are links to both Soul Hot and the Feminist Wire. Um, and then under that is like the most recent news related to the department. So again, this is a very dynamic entity where, you know, we expect people to come here and engage with us. When we did, uh, we did a podcast a couple months ago, and that was on the page. And we will do more of that. But the podcast was um, a way for us to engage using a different kind of modality, um, to get to the people, to talk about you know, what we're interested in, to hear us all in conversation with one another. 
Thank you so much. We look forward to visiting the site, um, accessing all of the information and clicking the support button. <laughs> um, we have about five minutes left and there are some questions in the chat. I will read through them all and then we'll see which ones we can get to. How does AAAS interact with the African Studies Center? Do or will professors have dual appointments? How has our current social and political environment helped inform the formation of the department? Activism and scholarship are not opposing virtues and goals for the AAAS program, but they do demand lots of time and energy. How do you balance the two demands on your attention as members of the profession and the university community? Can we go through them one by one? Yes, you're, you're on mute. Let me, let me unmute. I'm still doing that. Thank you. Yeah, we should go back. <laughs> the first one I can say, and then uh, tomorrow you can go, the connections to the African studies. Um, so uh, one of the first units to reach out uh, to me uh, was African studies. So extremely appreciative of folks there. Like I said, we talk about what we're building, but if I could just shout out the folks who have received us, with so much um, openness and willingness to collaborate and to meet and um, African studies for sure has been a part of that here at MSU. And so um, we are in the process of creating our bylaws and all of that deliciously <laughs> mundane uh, if you need it to collaborate uh, in full health, but we promise it's more on the way. I'll say that. Do you want to take a question, Dr. Lomax? There was also- I, What was the next question? How has our current social and political environment helped inform the formation of the department? Well, I mean, historically, you know, it, just thinking about the formation of Black studies and how it was a response to social movement and it was a response to social movement against racial injustice. We are still that, but also I like to add in terms of our particular interest in black feminisms, genders and sexualities um, in, in response to the, there was a pushback in the early days of black studies where black, black feminists were like, well, there's women's studies, there's black studies, where's my place as a black woman? And so, you know, and that's always been the question, right? Where do we belong? Where do black women belong, even in social movement? Where do we belong in terms of black studies or women's studies? Where is our place? And so AAAS at MSU is really a response to that. It's a response to obviously social movement as it has been historically, but it's also in response to that question that has always been a question when we've talked about racial injustice. The question has always been, okay, well, once we, you know, as we are talking about race, how are the, when are we going to also simultaneously talk about sex and gender? Because we are all these things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so AAAS is absolutely a response to, you know, these questions that have been around and circulating unanswered, problematized, troubling um, for decades. But simultaneously, we have the current social movement, right? And it's the social movement um, that's for, for Black lives that's very similar to the social movement in the 1960s, right? There's this movement um, for black community. And so we are a response to that. We're very much interested in that labor that is central to who we are and what we do, right? But it's also central to who we are specifically as black women. And we can, there is no way for us to engage in this work and not bring our full selves, which means bringing our full womanhood as well and bringing our, our gender, bringing our sexualities, bringing our sexual identities and bringing all of that in ways that it had not been done previously um, in Black studies. <clears throat> Absolutely, thank you so much. We have one more question and then I think there's one that came in. I, I just need a minute to review it first. But the last question is, um, or states, activism and scholarship are not opposing okay. virtues and goals for AAAS, but they do demand lots of time and energy. How do you balance the two demands on your attention as members of the profession and the university community? 
that question, we can both answer that fully. Uh, the highest of keys, it is uh, demanding. I also find that the questions that I am motivated to pursue to their ends until they start again are motivated at those intersections. Um, so what questions are we struggling with collect collectively? Um, in terms of this current moment, mentioned again, we are in a pandemic context. Uh, there are resources that we need, hit that support button. And then there are resources that we bring <laughs> and you know, people are our greatest resource. Uh, and we are energy. And so I'm, hope, I'm hopeful um, when we talk about a culture of care in Cal, that that praxis is a real praxis. So how is your energy uh, doing? And I appreciate for sure all the ways that um, the folks that I have been working with uh, have appreciated and extended so much grace. Because for me in that grace is motivation to stay to remain uh, the motivation. There is restoration for me of my energy in the work because of the grace extended from these uh, wonderful uh, human beings who I have the, the pleasure to, to dream and build with. And so I hope that helps somebody. Um, I would say for me that, um, and I think for both of us actually, that the work of the institution that we are doing specifically, this may not be the case for everybody, but I think for both Ruth Nicole and I, the work that we do within academia um, is not separate from social justice. It is social justice work. And I mean, that's, that's historically also been the case for Black Studies. Black Studies is historically a social justice um, discourse and discipline. And so we are no different um, in that way. And so, I think the way that the question is asked, it's as if these things are separate and that for many people, maybe they are. And so it appears like it's a, a adding on of work. Um, for, for me, I would say that it's not an adding on. My, my work is centralized within social justice movement. Um, and so I get energy from doing um, that work that I feel is liberating to black people and people, you know, oppressed people everywhere. So I don't see it as um, a burden or something that I'm doing on top of, you know, the real work. No, this is the social justice work is real work. And the social justice work is intellectual work, but also the intellectual work is social justice work. So I do not see those things as separate. I see them as very much being um, a part of each other. Integrated with a little grace or a lot of grace. Certainly like that, the sound. <laughs> that was our last question for today. Um, so thank you all for, thank you both for answering all of our questions and thank you to the audience for listening. It has been a joy to learn more about you both and the great work that you are doing in AAAS. I certainly want to make sure that we thank our attendees for taking the time out of their day to watch it means a lot to have um, an opportunity to engage with so many donors and alumni that care about the work and research in the College of Arts and Letters. I hope that you all have a great rest of the week and go green. <laughs> go white. <laughs> go Take white. Care of your <laughs> Take care of your yes. energy, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you all you so, so much. much.